Hi, my name is Matt Duff. I am an application engineer covering precision amplifiers. And today I want to talk to you about converting spectral noise density to RMS noise. So when you look at a data sheet, typically you'll see on a data sheet something that looks like this. So it'll say voltage noise density at a particular frequency. Uh, and then it'll say something nanovolts per hertz. And that is the spectral noise density. Typically also on a data sheet in the typical performance uh, section, you're going to see a curve like this. And if you look, you'll notice that this point in the data sheet, uh, in the data sheet table, corresponds to the point in the curve on, in the typical performance curve. So this 40 nanovolts per hertz at 1 kilohertz is right here on the curve as well. Now what we're going to talk about today is how to convert this information into RMS noise, which can be useful for looking at the noise of a total system. And I would encourage you also to look at another video we have where we convert RMS noise to peak-to-peak -peak noise. So how do we go about doing this? Well, what we need to first know is what is our frequency of our system. So let's assume, for example, that we're going to say the frequency of our system is 10 kilohertz. So I'm going to draw a line right here. 10 kilohertz. And what we want to do is we want to integrate under this total area of the curve. So what we want to know is the energy all along here. Now, what you can do is you can go and you can look at this little piece, integrate, look at this little piece, integrate, look at this little piece, integrate, and be very accurate. Uh, but that's very time intensive. So I've drawn up here this equation of how you would go about doing this. But again, this is something that most people don't do because you do have to go and, and look at the data sheet and pick out each number off of this graph. So what the most folks do is we're just going to approximate. And we're going to say this area is going to look like a box. So we're going to draw a box. And we're just going to do this area. Now you might say, well, look at all this extra that we're leaving here. You know, we're going to get a really bad answer because we're leaving off all this energy. Well, actually, if you remember, we've got a logarithmic scale here. And so because we have a logarithmic scale, this amount of energy is actually quite, quite small compared to the amount of energy here. So it's really a pretty good approximation as long as we're operating, you know, as long as our cutoff is in the white noise area of the curve, as long as we're not trying to do some sort of uh, approximation way over here. So now that we've got our box, what do we do? Well, now it's very simple. So instead of this complicated equation, all we have to do is we take our spectral density and we multiply it by the square root of our frequency. So if we say this is 40 nanovolts per hertz here, and this is 10 kilohertz, we would just multiply that 40 nanovolts per hertz times that 10 kilohertz. So it's pretty easy. Now, if you want to be a little more accurate, one thing to remember is that in most systems, you don't have a nice brick wall filter here where uh, you pass everything up to your cutoff frequency and then everything else is blocked. Typically, in a normal system, you've got a filter, and that filter looks something like this. So it comes down here and comes out here. So you you chop off a little bit of frequency uh, content here, but mostly you let through a lot of extra noise content here. And so you have to account for this. And depending upon your filter, uh, it lets more uh, content through. So I've drawn up on uh, this pad here different filter types. So you can notice that a one-pole filter lets quite a bit through. So a brick wall filter as you can see, the brick wall filter has an ideal case of one. And for a one pole filter, you let 57% more through. So you would multiply by 1.57. And as you go to higher and higher order filters, uh, you get closer and closer to this ideal one. Now, I've drawn up stuff for a Butterworth filter. Note that for a Chebyshev or for a Bessel, you're going to have different values here, which you could look up. Uh, but one rule of thumb is that the higher order your filter is, the closer and closer you get to your brick wall estimate, es estimation. So now that we've learned all of this, how would you actually do this? Let's do an example. So we do our 40 nanovolts per root hertz. We multiply 
that by our 10 kilohertz bandwidth times the square root of that 10 kilohertz bandwidth. And then we multiply by this 1.57 because I'm assuming I'm going to have a one pole filter here. So you do this and you'll end up getting something like 6.3 microvolts RMS. So that's how you would convert spectral density into RMS noise. Thanks.